Hi, my name is Lin Nguyen. Uh, in this video I'll be going over how to make a simple script, something that just converts uh, currency for you. Um, I went over this in class, uh, in my class, and I'm going to go over it again in the videos. This way I can help my students um, by reiterating what we did in class. So, here I have Eclipse open. Um, if you want to know how to set this up to work with Python, I have another video for that already. Feel free to check it out. So I'm going in here, new project. I use a PyDev project over here. I'm going to call this currency converter using grammar version 2.7, 2.72. Finish. Go in there, new file, and I'm going to call this currency converter.py. Alright, so before I start any scripting or using any fancy syntax, I always make sure I have some notes down to figure out you know, what it is that I'm trying to script and uh, in what order to make sure that my logic is correct to start with. Um, so let's just start off uh, by just commenting. I'm just going to type the name up here first. And scripted by and normally I have a description in there. Converts USD to Euro or vice versa. And if your script requires, um, I guess if your script is a bit more complex and it requires some sort of description on how to use it, I also recommend putting on how to use. Um, mine's going to be fairly simple, so I won't need to do that. So, all my commenting will be done uh, by describing exactly what I want to do first. Let's figure out what it is I want to do. Well, first off, I want to find out what it is that the user wants to convert. So, find out what the user wants to convert. USD to Euro or Euro to USD. Um, afterwards, what do we need to do? I need to store that store answer into a variable. This will allow me to um, alter the vari variable in way, one way, shape, or form. Following that, uh, I'll want to do something with the variable. So maybe find out what it is that they typed out. Don't want to do it by te checking text or numbers. Uh, I'm going to make it easier for myself uh, because it's going to be very simple right now. Let's keep it as 1 equals that and 2 equals this. So if it doesn't answer equal to any of these, then it'll error out. Um, this way, it's just more simple. I'll, I'll have a video tutorial later on that'll take whatever the user types out and converts it to a certain type of um, Casing. This way, you can check if it's typing USD or Euro. But for the sake of a very simple, basic first application, let's just keep it to numbers. So after it does this, it needs to check and see what the user typed. If the user typed one. do something. If the user let me typed I'll put that D in there typed two do something. We're going to clarify exactly what that something is soon. And if the user typed anything else do something again. Okay, so what does this do something? We, I'm just breaking it down to the basic body of the entire script. All in English, so it's a lot easier to understand. Uh, usually when I see a lot of tutorials uh, and whatnot, I always see them just go straight into scripting and code, and they're coming up with a logic while they do that. Um, I think as a, anyone who's new to coming to scripting or programming, it's highly recommended that you do this whole process first. Figure out what the logic is. What do you want it to do? And once you figure out what it is you want to do, you can then type out the script or code for it. 
Um, if it works for loops, maybe you say, uh, I want to loop this thing 10 times, that you just type it out so you know what you're doing. This also makes commenting significantly easier because uh, I don't know about you guys, but personally, I hate going back and adding the comments. Might as well just get them through with it in the beginning. So if anyone else continues your work afterwards, they already see your logic. You may not have been done with what you're working with, but at least they can go back, see, okay, he got this far or she got this far, and I continue with their logic. Or if someone needs to check over, hey, what are you, what are you doing? You can show them, oh, this is how I'm planning to lay out my script or my program, and it just makes things a lot more clear. Other things to keep in mind, um, if you are using a different interpreter or uh, scripting a different interpreter or program or whatever that also uses Python, be very careful with this last line. Uh, using PyDef or the Python IO GUI, this last line won't cause any problems. Let's say uh, you're scripting in a program like Maya, this last line will error out. All of your syntax can be perfect, but if there's that one last enter, it will error out and give you a pro uh, error. So just get used to scripting for the lowest com common denominator. And if something like that pops up, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. Next up, we need to figure out how. Uh, what is the conversion exactly of euros to USD? Well, I went on Google earlier and checked this out. Normally, if uh, you're going to do a more complex script, you have it search online. Uh, or a database of some sort that constantly updates to find out the current uh, conversion. I mean, it changes all the time. But when I just checked r uh, right now, the uh, conversion is 1 USD equals to 0 0.7617 euros. And uh, 1 euro equals to 1.3128 USD. Just type both of those out just so you have it right there already. So you don't have to go back and search Google again in case you forgot. All your notes are right here. I will go back and clean up this uh, comments so it makes more sense to the actual content or script I type out. So, okay, so we have this. We find out now we know what the user wants to do. So what does this do something? Well, maybe you want to ask the user uh, prompt the user um, the amount of USD they want to convert. And I'm just going to copy all of this and paste it in here eventually and replace the text. Um, after that, I need to store uh, what the user typed into a variable. And after I store it, I probably want to do the math for it. So the math at this point would be um, euro would equal to USD amount times 0 0.7617. After this, output amount to user. I'm going to copy this right here because it's going to be the same right here. And I'm just replacing this now with euro. Euro USD. Um, now I know exactly what I need to do. I still have these extra lines down here for the error. So maybe Tell the user what they did wrong. Run the scripts again. Okay, so once I did all of this, I realized something. I need to run the script again. So the easiest way to do that is by putting the entire script into a function, or in this case inside Python, it's called a def. Um, that allows me to call the script over and over again however many times I want it. So in order to have that work, I need to put this whole thing in a tab. So let's start off with that. Let's keep it simple. Now that I have the logic that I want down, um, it's very straight to the point. Let's start off with the function. So in Python, I start with def. Uh, in other languages you might have used, I might start with function, 
Uh, I also am a Maya mail scripter that uses proc and etc. But typically, there's some sort of uh, name that follows after this. Uh, so I'm going to call this currency convert. And uh, Eclipse already goes through and takes care of the rest. Now here comes a tricky thing. If you're not used to using Python, um, it's going to feel a bit weird. In Python, you don't use these uh, curly brackets like we typically do in almost every other scripting language. In fact, in here we use tabs. So the white spacing on the left hand side actually does matter. So make sure you get this right. So I tab right in and whatever is tabbed lets it know that it's in this function. If it's not tabbed, then it's not within this function anymore. Okay? So let's start off with the first section right up here. Find out what the user wants to convert. Okay, I'll call this user choice equals something. Why am I using user choice? Because I need to store the answer into a variable. You see that right there? I need to store it. So let's put this under here. So um, we store it. So this is the way it works inside Python. In most other uh, languages, you must declare your variable first and declare the type of variable it is. Inside Python, the variable become the variable type, data type, becomes whatever it is that's being stored inside. So if it said user choice equals a one, it'll already assume user choice is an integer. You don't type out int user choice. You make the user choice or your variable equal to whatever type it is. So if I made 1.0, it would assume that user choice now is a float type variable. In turn, if I type out text like so, it'll assume that user choice is now a string. Some ways it's convenient, in others it can be kind of annoying because you can't tell sometimes if you mistype something. Um, for example, if I made user choice equals to uh, one, and later on I have an if statement and checks to see if user choice, uh, what user choice equals to, and I mistype user choice and make it equal another number, I'll declare a new variable and store that value into that new variable instead of overriding my current variable. Uh, I'll go into more in depth on that later, but let's just get this to work right here. So there are two different ways you can grab input. One is using input. This just pull, pulls uh, pure number data, and it works fine for that, but the instant someone types uh, any form of text and that gets stored inside, it freaks out and errors. So for this case, I'll be using raw input instead. And I'm going to open parentheses, close, and now I'm going to add my um, quotes. I want to ask the user, what do you want to convert? And I can type out 1 USD to Euro, 2 Euro to USD. And I'm going to print this out right now. Print user choice. This make this allows me to check if I indeed typed anything right and did actually store the info I want. Use prints often to check if you did everything right. Now let's check this out real quick. I'm going to run this right now. Run. It's going to ask me to save. I'll say OK. And it's going to run it. Nothing pops up. Why? Because there's nothing in here that's calling currency convert right now. I need it to execute this function. So to make it easier on myself, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom, untab, and type out currency convert. I'm going to make sure I type that right. Okay, so this means now when I run my script, it's going to execute this function instantly. So I'm going to run this again, and there it goes. So now it asks exactly what the user wants. I can see where the line is right now. It's kind of annoying. I don't like that. Maybe I want to make it so it looks a little bit cleaner. Um, 
if I type 2 right now, you see it just ends right there, and that just looks bad. So let's just get that over with. Cool. It stores it. That works. So what can we do uh, to clean it up and make it easier to look at? I'm going to add a slash n, which makes it go down one line, and makes it a little bit easier for them to um, type out. Well, we could also make this look a lot cleaner if we want by uh, adding enters between this so it's a lot easier to uh, read. Okay, so I'm just going here now and using the same slash n, use slash n right in front of the one and slash n in front of the two. This is all so it's a lot easier and cleaner to look at whenever this runs. So I'm going to run this again. Okay, and now we see that it goes down a line. That's what the slash n does. And let's just see this under here. And when you're typing it, your answer is at the bottom of everything. So I like it because it's a lot cleaner. Uh, you can put a whole line in there if you want. It's up to you. Um, in this case, I just wanted to make sure that whatever pops up, it's easy enough for the user to look at. And it stores the variable. And right now, that works out properly. Let's try it again and see if it stores text. Cool. It works. So, um, now that we've gotten that, let's now just check what's going on. Let's get this thing to work. So I have the if user typed 1, etc. Let's go down here. I'm going there and type if user choice equals equals 1. So right here, it's just checking what the user typed. And uh, this is the format for checking if something equals something. You need two equal signs and one followed by a colon. And everything inside the if, instead of using the curly brackets like you might have used in the previous or in other versions or programming languages, in here you just tab and you'll be down. So from there, I'm just going to check it real quick, do a print. Let's have it print something. Uh, choice equals one, so I know it works. Down here, um, you type out elif, that basically is else if user choice equals equals two. I'll have it print something again. Print choice equals two. This way I can test out everything. Then go down here. I'm going to type else. So this is anything else. Type out something that we want. So I'm going to say print error. Okay. Let's see if it does just that. Run it. I go in here. One. One good went straight to error. Okay, maybe I did something wrong. And let's run this again. Type out two. Went straight to error. Let's go through and check what it is we could have typed that caused this little issue to happen. Um, first off, I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need this here anymore. I'm going to save this. Okay, we're going to resume this. And the thing about it is raw input right here. What does it store? The data type. When we printed it out, we couldn't tell. We assumed it was an integer. But using raw input, it stores it as a string. In fact, if I mouse over it, it even tells you raw input prompt string. So if it's by type string, instead of just saying equals equals one, I need to make sure my one inside quotes. Same with this. And now with this it's going to check did they type in 1, did they type in 2, etc. Error. So let's run this again. 1. Choice equals 1. Cool. Let's run this again. 2. Choice equals 2. All right, what if I type 3? Error. What if I type USD? Error. So this lets you know that this does work. Now we need to go through and start having it do what we need it to do, like an example, asking them for input and whatnot. OK. So we can use a raw input again, or we can use uh, input. That's entirely up to you. OK, so let's ask the uh, user the question. 
I'll call this uh, user USD equals to in case instead of using raw input this time, we'll use input. Um, enter the amount in USD you wish to convert. Um, now what happens is whatever they type in here is going to be stored inside user USD. And then uh, let's just cut that and put that on top. And let's do the math. Well, I already have it right here. So euro equals the USD amount times that. So I'm going to change this to user USD. And uh, I'm going to output this out to the user. So I'm going to print. Um, I'm going to print. Use the parentheses right here. Actually, I'm going to use user USD. And because the USD uses a certain symbol, we can also start off with the dollar sign. User USD equals Euro. Uh, Euro. Let me look up the symbol for that one. Okay, I found it. So instead of using it this way, I'll just say equals. Paste that right in. Um, and now we can run this. Okay, let's save that. Error. Um, I guess it doesn't like these symbols, so I'll just type out euro. Alright, one. Enter amount of USD I wish to convert. Um, I didn't put the uh, slash n so there's no enter. 50. And it types it out for me. Pretty neat. Uh, I'm going to remove the parentheses. Let's run this again. 1. 50. 50 USD equals to uh, 38.085 euro. Um, I'm going to go in here and fix this though with the slash n. So now whatever I type out is going to uh, go down instead. And notice there's already a space between it, so I'm going to remove this space. Pops this out. Alright, so let's do that again. Great, 50. And it gives that to me. Uh, what I can actually do is um, give a decimal point after it all the time. So I'm going to do just that. Uh, so after this, what I'm going to do is do a uh, space percent 0.2f. And out here, I'm going to put a percent sign in front of user uh, USD and let's just run this so you can see what it does it puts the actual uh, extra decimal places afterwards so I can do the same over here I can use the whole percent 0.2 F this means it's two uh, floating points to the side and use the percent symbol right in front of this. I'm going to run this. And there I go. It automatically rounds everything up for you, gives you the, the number out, which is kind of useful. Okay, now that I have this done already, I might as well just copy this whole thing and paste it right in here. Because the only differences are certain numbers and variables. So I'm going to change this right here from USD to Euro. I'm going to change the user Euro. This will now become USD user Euro. Change this out.
All right. Uh, let's change the numbers. Let's see if I can always go up here. Check it. Check it, and I'm just gonna copy that value. Go right here. Paste. I'm gonna double check everything. Use a euro equals input. Enter amount of euro you wish to convert. USD equals the euro times 1.3128. Print. It'll take the euro. It's gonna put it right in here, and it's going to give it just two decimal points, and it's gonna add this text afterwards adds USD to it. Let's test it. Two. Let's convert 50 euro. This is 50 euro equals to 65.64 USD. So this is actually pretty cool. Alright, what next? Let's uh, work with our else statement. Error. You entered invalid information please try again and I'm going to run the script again currency convert and I'll always execute this whole script over and over again so I'm going to now run this again and let's tap out three error you entered invalid information please try again and it goes back to this what do you want to convert I'll say 2, 33.25, blah, 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 whatever I want. And it'll automatically round it for you, convert it for you. At this point, we can have this go further and ask them, would you like to do this again? All right. So let's do that. Let's have it, would you like to do this again? Uh, it'll ask that, and then if they say yes, to run this whole thing again. But having that asked twice in here is kind of annoying. So I'm going to create another def. Do again. And in here, this is what it's going to, uh, it's, in here, it's what's going to ask the user. So it's going to be, um, I'll call this do uh, user do uh, again equals to uh, raw input would you like to convert uh, again I uh, get the idea I'd like to convert again slash n one yes slash n two no and from there I'm going to do the whole if statement again if user do again equals equals one We run the whole script again. Currency convert. Elif user do again equals equals two. All right. Alright, so if they want to do it again, we can say print, thank you for using this program. And else, print error, I just copy this. And this time I'm going to run do again again and in here I forgot this slash n right there okay so I made this whole def here this right here prompts the user if they um, would like to run the convert currency program again Q 
checks what the user typed. If choice was one, if choice was two, if choice was anything else. So we want to call this function after we run any of this stuff right here. So what I can do just to separate everything all the time is because each time I type a running of these stuff, um, there's always no gaps between anything. So I can, after any of this stuff right here, type print, just have a gap, and run the script. So I can say run do again. Same right here. Do again. There's a whole thing off. I can do the same thing right here. Print. This way, each time it runs it, there's a slight gap. Or we can have a line. Like if we wanted to, we can just do this. So it separates it. Um, I'll, I'll do that. I like the little line thing. That looks pretty good. And again, it'll just run this whole thing out for you, which is convenient. It's pretty nice. So if I now run all of this, I say 1, enter amount of which to convert 50. Would you like to convert again? I can say uh, no. I'll say thank you for using this program. Now I can run this again and say um, 3, error. You enter the invalid information. This splits it up a little bit so it's easy to look at. Um, what we can do to make this a little bit easier or cleaner, I guess I can remove it from here and actually have it before the user is asked or prompted. So it's always on top of that. So you never have to worry about typing um, some of this stuff again. Let's do that. And if I say uh, 1, 50, to run it again, 151. Well, let's check this real quick. Oh, I put in the wrong location. Put that on top of this. So it starts off with a line on top. I can have that start off the line on top and bottom if I really wanted to. So um, instead of asking it right there, I can have it so just an empty slot. But this way, it just kind of keeps it a little bit more clean. 50, yes, and the line pops up every single time. 3, error, pops up again. It's just nice and clean, so uh, I'll get rid of it down here so we don't get a double line. Run this again. 3, air, the line draws out again, it's nice and clean and separates everything. So I hope this was useful for you. Um, it just goes over some very uh, basic ideas inside scripting uh, and you, this, these type of programs you'll see everywhere. It's the most basic types, it does a math equation of some sort, gives you the in information, puts it out. Uh, so. I'll be continuing to make more of these videos, uh, so stay tuned.